you're not thinking about something and then it's like, boom, you see something, you hear something, a word springs to mind, an idea, this like gut, like turn right, go right, don't go that way. That is your intuition. Hi guys, it's Rach. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I guess we should also mention, last time we were together, I was pretty stressed out about my new haircut and the fact that I didn't know how to style it. Wow, it's not, okay, We're that's not bad. And guys, I'm loving short hair. Two big reasons. Number one, I just let my hair air dry this week and you're like, yeah, no doubt we can tell because this is what it looks like but I kind of love it. I kind of love it and the fact that I can sort of get this, whatever this is, I, I do, if you can't see this, if you're not watching on YouTube, I do look a bit like the teacher from the Magic School Bus. Oh no, I'm wrong. Take chances, make mistakes. My point is that I really like this hair. I really like an air dried, it's like a wavy moment and also I'm trying to repair my hair. So air drying is like the best thing that I can do. I promise not to do an entire podcast about my hair again. If you want that episode, it's last week. Today's topic's a really good one because we're talking about intuition. And intuition, what we attract into our life, how we can be connected with our inner wisdom, how we can be better connected with source, with God, with guardian angels, with spirit guides, with whatever you believe in. I think it's all kind of one big same thing. But whatever you believe in, this is a conversation about how you can get more connected with that. And to be fair, I have done a lot of podcasts around this subject over the last few years, especially as I was going on a spiritual journey and trying to learn more about it. What I thought might be cool is what are things that intuitive people actually do? Sometimes that's a really cool perspective to try and learn something new is not just to learn about it, but to actually model behavior. When we don't know what to do, it's really helpful to look at someone else who's doing the thing we wanna do, and then we're like, hey, how do I do that? Oh, let me try and model, okay, I wanna be a marathon runner. Okay, let me go follow some marathon runners on social. Okay, I can see that they're staying hydrated, and I can see that they're doing this kind of training plan, and I can see that they're doing this. So that just gives you some ideas for the direction to lean in. And that's what we're gonna do today is six things intuitive people do. And this is according to me. I'm sure that there's other opinions and other intuitive people will tell you different, but this is six things intuitive people do based on your girl Rach and my observations. I don't think my voice sounds scratchy, but I do wanna note that I spent the last three days reading my audiobook and I just did the audiobook recording for the new one. When did you know something was wrong? Which is, what if you are the answer? And 26 other questions that just might change your life. That's exactly what I sounded like in the audiobook, so. I am really proud of this book. And weirdly, if Girl Wash Your Face had a sequel, but that sequel was seven years apart, that's what these are. And what I love about What If You Were The Answer is that it really is everywhere, for everyone, all over the place. It's funny stories, it's probably more than anything I've ever done, is totally awesome, I hope, for men to read as well. It's for women. But if you're one of the dudes in my community or you are you force your man to read the books that you read, I actually think this one's gonna work really well. There is a lot of conversation about uterus, period. You know that's woven in there. It just is, cause it's a hard road we walk and I wanna acknowledge it. I haven't felt like this probably since Girl Wash Your Face. So I'm just so excited. Even if only five of you read it, I really think like three out of the five is probably really gonna like it. So I'm excited. Let's talk about today's podcast. Six things intuitive people do. Every one of these episodes I've been weaving in themes from the book because I like the idea that by the time it comes out on January 7th, just in time for the new year, y'all have 
a really good idea of what's in it so you know if it makes sense for you or not. This topic of intuition and learning to trust your gut and learning to know yourself and to have faith in yourself, it really is the heart of this book. It is the spine, pun intended, of this book. Even though every chapter is so different, this theme emerges again and again and again because the reason that the book is made up of questions, not my answers, but questions for you, is that you are the only one who has your answers. You are the only one who knows what's right for you at the most fundamental level. But if you have lost touch with that inner wisdom, if you are not connected to something greater, if you feel very unsure or very uncertain, my hope is that by exploring the questions in this book, you, you really get to know yourself better. I am gonna read a little excerpt from the book because I explain intuition in the way that makes the most sense to me and in a way I've never heard it explained. I assume most of you are my witchy sisters and you're like, yes, tell me all the things. But just in case you're like, I really don't know what you're saying, this is what I think intuition is according, well, to me. Woo, I love this part, what a dork, but whatever. Imagine that you have a fantastic and beautiful friend who loves you unconditionally and who always has the exact right answer to anything you're wondering. Your friend is basically a magical fairy. The ethereal ones from Lord of the Rings, not the pirate kind from the last Tinkerbell spinoff. Now imagine that every single time this amazing friend tries to say anything to you, you ignore her. Doesn't matter what it is, a piece of advice, a warning, a compliment, Whenever your friend says anything, you argue with her about why she's wrong or simply pretend she didn't say anything at all. How long would it take before your friend stopped trying? How long would it be before her voice got smaller and smaller until it was barely audible? This is exactly what happens with our intuition. That still small voice inside you has tried and tried to tell you that you're beautiful and worthy, but you argue that you're not. It yells that this person is no good, that there's something inherently wrong with your pairing. You ignore it. When you later discover exactly how toxic they were, you cry and lament, how could I not have seen this before? That perfect magical friend shrinks even smaller inside of you. The problem is not that you don't have intuition. The problem is that you've built up bigger and bigger walls to block out your own voice until you can't hear yourself anymore. Pretty wild that you have impenetrable boundaries in place against yourself and very few against anybody else. It's almost as if your own true self can't exist simultaneously with people or situations who don't respect it. And so you must silence whichever of the two of you you value the least. Ooh, I wish someone had read that to me when I was 30. Woo hoo hoo. So that's where we start. Let's talk about intuition. Inner wisdom is our birthright. It's something that every single one of us has, but certain circumstances in life drive us further and further away from that knowing. That can be things like grief or pain or trauma. That can be things like being in survival mode. Like if you don't know where you're gonna sleep tonight or you don't know how you're gonna get food, you're not really sitting around going like, oh wow, what does my, what? No, you're, you're at the most basic level of human needs. Like Maslow has this thing called the hierarchy of need. I know I reference it a lot. But at the most basic level, you're just trying to survive. And if you're caught in survival mode, either a real one or the kind that we make up in our mind through anxiety, like when we get in that fight or flight, when we're in our amygdala instead of in the prefrontal cortex, that energy is going to separate you from the groundedness that you would need to be able to tap into that knowing. I think that every single one of us has this inside of us, but whether or not you currently have access to it 
whether or not you can currently even hear it speaking to you, whether or not you are able to trust what you're hearing, these are all different levels of this connection. Six things intuitive people do. Number one, intuitive people ask for guidance. I am listing this as the number one thing because I think this is the foundation of it all. You ask for guidance. You ask for guidance and you do that in a bunch of different ways. I was raised in a religious environment where prayer was a really big part of our life and I vehemently believe in the power of prayer. It doesn't even matter what your religion is. You can look this up. There's so much data on the power of prayer, regardless of whether or not you are of a certain religion, regardless of whether or not you even believe there's a God out there. When you pray for someone else over a situation, it's incredibly powerful. So I was raised in a world where we prayed. We, we prayed all the time and you would ask God to watch over you and you'd ask for protection and you'd ask for guidance of a certain situation, that is a fantastic place to start. If that's the only thing that you know how to do is to pray. Hold on, I'm getting very hot. What else is new? Perimenopause. Here we go. You know, it's like 50 degrees outside and I'm hot. Welcome to my 40s. I just wanna establish this and you don't have to believe what I believe, but when I keep referencing like God, universe, source, angels, spirit guides, I really think that that is all part of one thing. So they're different, but they're the same in my mind. You don't have to believe that, but it might help you as I explain this. So when I talk out loud, I'll talk to, maybe I'm talking to my grandma, maybe I'm talking to a spirit guide, maybe I'm asking God for help, but I talk all the time. Preferably when no one else is around so they don't think I'm a weirdo. I don't know, that makes me feel so calm. It makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like something bigger than me is in this with me. I wish you guys could get in the car and drive around with me so I could show you that I never look for parking. Whatever parking spirit guides, like they're, they're on it. And I live in LA where it is impossible to get a meter. Your girl gets a meter every time. It's just, oh, right out, fabulous, thank you. Where'd you park? Right out front. Uh, it's so silly, but I don't think that there's anything too small to ask for guidance on. And parking seems little, and maybe you roll your eyes at that, but I actually think that if you are struggling to trust in something bigger than yourself, it's actually really helpful to start with tiny things, to start with something small. My point in this is you ask. You ask for the things you want guidance on. You ask, hey, help me manage the situation with my girlfriend. I really wanna be able to like be a good partner, but I don't know how to help her. Ask for that. I just wanna add one more little asterisk to this. In case you're like, well, I'm not intuitive at all. I don't believe that, I think we all are intuitive, but something you might not realize is your intuition. If you're just going through life, you're walking down the street, you're at your job, you're listening to music, and all of a sudden you get like an incredible idea for something. You're not thinking about something and then it's like, boom, you see something, you hear something, a word springs to mind, an idea, this like gut, like turn right, go right, don't go that way. That is your intuition whether it's your guides, your, your inner wisdom, whatever, that is a sign that intuition is speaking to you. Those aren't just passing fancies, unless they're like invested all in crypto, okay? We're, we're not gonna listen to that voice. But anything else, when you're getting these little nudges, that's your intuition, dude. Some of the most successful things I have ever done in my career were ideas like that. Back in 2015, the first viral thing I ever did was this post of me in a bikini. She says, I wear a bikini because I'm proud of this body and every mark on it. It went freaking bananas. It was like a whole thing. That post made me realize that this was something that women like me cared about. That initial post idea, three weeks earlier, out of the blue, I don't remember where I was, but out of the blue, it was so strong in my head I was like, I should write about stretch marks. And it just so happened that a few weeks later I was on a beach wearing a bikini. I looked at the picture 
And I was like, that's cute. But my stretch marks were really visible in it. And then I was like, oh, this is when I could write about stretch marks. And the rest is history. I remember that out of the blue thought, you should write about stretch marks. Be aware of when thoughts hit you like that. If you're at the beginning of this, you don't have to like capital T truth, like this is who I would have Just be like, oh, I wonder, just get curious. Curiosity is not something you need to build your whole life around, but curiosity can be a great way to consider and explore an idea without a lot of fear that you're gonna explore it wrong. Okay, the second thing intuitive people do is they meditate, they get quiet. And I want to add my own caveat here, which is they do it in a way that feels good to them. Not everybody is able to sit down in that like special yogi pose and hold their hands in a mudra and meditate for six hours. Like most of us don't have time. Some of us, our brains can't calm down long enough. So I say meditate, but in a way that feels really good to you. So. I think that I get most of my intuitive conversations and ideas two places. One is on walks or runs. So I walk every day. Sometimes I go on long runs. When I'm listening to music and it's sort of, I get into a flow state and it kind of, it becomes meditation. I'm not singing along to the music. I'm just kind of like in a zone. That is when I feel like I get the best ideas. That is when I feel like I get such incredible guidance. That is when I sort of, rest more fully into what my gut is telling me about certain situations. So moving my body with a soundtrack is one of my favorite ways to meditate. The second place that I get my best, I feel like, intuition and kind of a completely different kind of guidance. And this is the first time I'm wondering if these are two, you know, if it's two different spirit guides or one is intuition and one is, I don't know. But the other place that I get it a lot is as I'm falling asleep or right when I wake up. Just kind of the things that I have as I'm falling asleep. And then the next morning, it's like, I think you're in that state where there's not a lot of resistance and you're not questioning things. The headline of this one, this idea of meditation is just that you have to have moments where you get quiet where you're away from other people. Driving in the car could be a really good one. A yoga class can be a really good one. Regularly getting that in feels super important because if you can't quiet the noise of the world around you, it's gonna be really hard to hear that inner voice. The third thing, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is so freaking important, guys. The third thing that intuitive people do is they listen to their bodies. They listen to their bodies, they listen to their bodies, they listen to their bodies. Let's unpack it. Again, I'm gonna read you a little something from the book. Let me find the right chapter. So the question for this chapter is, when did you know that something was wrong? Because essentially we are animals, right? Like our body reacts like an animal and it will sense that something is good, that something is bad, that that guy is dangerous, that that girl is gonna be a psychopath. Like our body knows. Like if you can go back over your history and you look at things that, that have happened, your world goes ass over elbow and all of a sudden you're on the ground and you're like, what just happened? If you track it back, I do this with my friends, I do this with my kids, I'm like, okay, yes, he turned out to be the worst, but when did you know that this probably wasn't the person for you? Always, 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 people are like, on the first date, or, you know, the second time I met them, I had like something, and then I ask, Okay, what did that feel like in your body? Because it's different for every person. But if you can learn to tap into what does your body do when this is a good thing? What does your body do when this is dangerous? What does your body do when it's telling you no? You will immediately have access to information going forward where you're like, oh, sorry, I'm getting that weird feeling in my stomach and I don't really know why, but I'm gonna go ahead and exit stage right. Think about it. A deer or a dog or a ring-tailed lemur, if they have a sense that something is wrong, they're out. They don't debate it or rationalize it or consult with their friends first. They trust their intuition and go. Humans, on the other hand, have been taught again and again and again to ignore the voice inside of us that tells us something isn't right. 
This is wildly dangerous when the situation actually is life-threatening. Read The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker. But on a more basic level, ignoring what your body is telling you leads to the majority, if not all, of the most painful experiences of our life. The devastating breakup you went through after realizing your girlfriend was a covert narcissist. The business partner who ended up taking all the credit and most of the profit before leaving you to clean up the mess from all the bridges they burned. The new job that seemed so great at the beginning, but ended up being a soul-sucking nightmare. I'm not talking about the regular real-life tensions and annoyances that will affect every human. I'm talking about experiences where you feel bamboozled, where you've gotten so far off course. You look up one day in bewilderment and think, God, how did it go so wrong? What just happened is that you ignored the intuitive animal instinct that tried to protect you. You know how I know that people keep ignoring it? Because I can always trace my personal blunders back to the moment when I should have known and done better. And so I've learned to ask myself and others, when did you know something was wrong? Not when did it go wrong, but when did you know something was wrong? Because here's the thing, we always sense something isn't right long before it ever goes wrong. Think back, let's go the last five years. Look at the last five years of your life and think of something that went really wrong. Now go back in time, run it through your memory and see if you can identify the moment where it started to turn, but you didn't get off the ride. You didn't get off the train, you didn't break up with him, you didn't do what you know you should have. If you can identify that moment, then maybe you can start to think about like, well, what was happening? Okay, yeah, I was sort of sick to my stomach or gosh, I was feeling really anxious or I felt very uncomfortable, but I didn't know why. Or my friends told me it wasn't that big a deal. Or, you know, I had a drink and then I calmed myself down. I smoked a little pot and then it was fine. But when did your body try and tell you to listen that this wasn't right for you. The opposite is also a thing. Can you look at situations where it went so right? What was happening in your body then? How did it feel then? Slow down long enough to ask yourself, to ask your body, like, is this the right thing for you? Just start by paying attention to what your body's doing in certain situations. And this includes pain in your body, chronic illness, Certain people, you get around certain people and certain things start to happen. Man, your body is talking to you. Can you trust it enough to listen? The fourth thing, oh, what a segue. The fourth thing that intuitive people do is they trust themselves. And that is so much easier said than done. But one of my favorite lessons I've learned over the last year is that you don't need to know why your intuition told you not to go that way. You don't need to know. You just need to trust that your intuition told you to turn right. When you start to just listen to those instincts, turn right here, don't go this direction, actually flip around the block, you know what, let's go this way. You're never gonna know why that was your instinct. You're never gonna know why your instinct said, don't do this thing, and you don't have to. I have a really specific one that is kind of like famous in our family. I like made the decision that I wasn't gonna question it anymore. I was just gonna totally listen to what my gut was saying. My son had a football game and I have never had this happen in my life before or since, but I felt to my bones that he was not supposed to go to this football game. I don't know. I just, I like, it made me sick to my son. I just, I just was like, he cannot go to this football game. I mean, some of you who live in like football communities are like, How can you do that? And I went to him and I was like, Sawyer, I'm so sorry, but I don't think you're supposed to play in this game. And he was so <laughs> upset and his friends were upset. I mean, he's not like, bless him. He's, he wasn't like a, he's not the quarterback guys. Like, you know, the game wasn't affected. He was gutted and his friends were really pissed. I think there are still friends who don't like me because he couldn't play. And I never knew why. I don't, like, would we have, you know, knock wood, would we have gotten to a car accident on the way? Was he gonna injure himself in that game? I don't know. I literally don't know why, but I felt very strongly and I followed my intuition, even with the understanding that he was upset. And he was upset for a single day and then he was totally fine. And he jokes about it now. He's like, yeah, remember that time he wouldn't let me 
play in the football game. I'm like, yeah, but I also hope that maybe that helps him to listen to his intuition as well. I don't need to know why I felt that way, but I trusted it. This can show up with like food that you're considering eating, a direction that you're gonna drive home, like on the way home from work, a person that you just met. You don't need to know. You don't need to know. This can be little things in your life or super big things, but learn to trust that it's a, the only thing that matters is that you listen to what you know to be true. The fifth thing that intuitive people do, oh, this one's fun. They analyze their dreams. You and I both know that we, I assume you have dreams. Does everybody dream? This is the first time I'm wondering this. I'm gonna assume that you dream like I dream. Some dreams you're just like, wow, that was, I had a dream last night. You don't really remember it, it's not a thing. And then some dreams are so vivid, they feel more important. Those are the ones I pay attention to. And I have two for today's purposes where I had these dreams and I was like, oh dang, that's crazy. Either because I feel like my subconscious is trying to work through some stuff and I'm like, oh wow, that's cool. Look at my subconscious trying to learn how to deal with this situation. Or sometimes I feel like I'm getting a straight up message from spirit guides, guardian angels or somebody and I'm like, okay, I don't know what this means but I'm gonna take note of it. When I was in pre-production for my short film, More on that soon. It was a huge project, it was so scary, it was so hard, I loved every second of it. When I made the decision to produce it myself, I had this dream, this very vivid dream. I was at the grocery store and I looked down in my cart and I had a baby. And I was so aware that the baby was like awesome. This baby was like happy, it was super chill, and people would look at it and they'd remark it and they'd be like, oh my gosh, what a great baby. Like this is such a, this baby's so nice and this baby's so well behaved and this baby's great. And then I realized the baby only had a diaper on and I was like, oh my God, I'm an awful mother. Like I did, I, this kid's not wearing clothes and it's probably cold, it's a little baby. I need to get this kid dressed. So like I started to worry that I wasn't taking care of the baby the way that it should be taken care of. And then in the grocery store, I see someone from my past and not a good person. And they come up to my car and they look at the baby and they start telling me all the things that are wrong with the baby. The baby's ugly. Oh, hey, did you know that the baby pooped its pants and you haven't changed its diaper? And hey, did you know the baby's gonna keep you up all night? And they start telling me all the things that are wrong with the baby and how hard the baby's gonna be to raise. And by the way, that is exactly who this person was in my past. And that was my freaking dream. I was like trying to get away from the person who was talking crap about my baby, but now I was second guessing, do I have what it takes to like take care of this baby? <laughs> I woke up the next morning and I was like, whoa, my subconscious is really working through the fact that I am taking on a new project. Like, hello women, if you got a uterus inside your body and you are dreaming about babies, yeah, maybe you wanna be a mom or maybe you're working on a project. That's a huge, look that up. Like there's a huge correlation between creation, us trying to create something, and also it representing a child in our life. Honestly, all I took away from that was like, oh wow, this is incredible. Subconsciously, I'm scared of this. And subconsciously, I'm afraid of that kind of authority figure coming in and telling me I can't do it. But like, I'm figuring it out. Yeah, I'm afraid and I'm gonna do it anyway. I, my, if I go back to the beginning of my dream, my baby was awesome. So that tells me what I really feel about my project is like, it's pretty cool. So let's trust that initial feeling. So sometimes I have dreams like that where I feel like I'm aware of what my subconscious is working through. And then other times I get like a straight up message. I have to tell you guys this story. Probably two or three years ago, I had this visceral dream where my friend Kim, I've had her on the show several times, she's an energy healer, like she's amazing, I'm sure y'all know who I'm talking about. Kim came to me in a dream, like I've never had someone come to me in a dream before. She came to me in a dream and she said, whatever you do, don't work with, we'll say Mary Smith for fun, it wasn't Mary Smith. Mary Smith, I'm sure you're amazing. 
She's like, it's gonna seem like the best deal ever, but whatever you do, don't work with her. And it was so strong, I was like, that's crazy. I woke up the next morning and I was turning it over and over in my mind and I was like, was this a message for me? Or was this a message I'm supposed to give to Kim? So I called Kim and I'm like, hey dude, I don't know what this means, but I'm just gonna tell you this name. And if you ever run across a woman with this name, I don't know, but I don't think we are supposed to work. We don't work together, but I was like, just in case it's for you, here's the message. And if it's for me, also I'm taking that in. And I, I've never met someone with that name. And to my knowledge, she hasn't met someone with that name but I feel really confident I'm going to or she's going to because it was so strong. And I'm like, what if Mary Smith is like, hey, I'll give you $10 million to dance the hoochie coochie on the YouTube channel. And I'm like, well, for $10 million, I'm like, no, Mary, I know that I'm supposed to stay away from you. So I don't know what that dream means. Maybe I ate too much cheese that day and it means absolutely nothing. But I do know that intuitive people, we analyze our dreams because we know the universe is talking to us in all sorts of ways. The last thing that intuitive people do, I'm sure we do a lot more than that, but the last thing that I thought of today, number six that intuitive people do is that we notice the synchronicities. Synchronicities are when things just align beautifully when stuff just shows up in your world and your sister tells you that she heard that karate is really helpful for kids who have ADHD and her son has ADHD, so she'd love to find a dojo for him to join. And then two hours later, you're talking to a mom at school pickup who tells you that her son runs a dojo and they're incredible and they specialize with working with kids who are neurodivergent and you're like, oh my God, how is that possible? that I just heard this thing and here comes exactly what our family needs to help my nephew. That's a synchronicity. When you see things just align and I really can't stress enough that it starts in small ways. And if you don't notice the small stuff, I don't think the bigger stuff comes. When you're setting yourself up to look for those things, it's all part of a greater orientation for your life and your spirit and the way that you live each day where you're like, okay, I'm open to this, I'm receptive, I'm on the lookout, I'm listening, I'm asking, I'm thinking through, I'm getting time to be quiet so that I can really make sure that I'm in touch with myself, I'm paying attention to what my body's doing. And the result is you grow your intuition in really cool, and sometimes profound ways. And I think that the more we can learn who we really are and what our inner knowing knows is best, the better our life is gonna be. I'm glad y'all have hung out with me for this long. If you dug this episode, I'd so appreciate if you share it with someone that you love. Um, we will be back soon with more conversation. If you wanna grab a pre-order of the book, we start our pre-order gift campaign in November and that's gonna be really cool. I promise I'll tell you more about it soon. But if you pre-order at any point between now and January 7th, you can nab the free gift when it comes out. But yeah, you can get it on Audible. I know some of you guys have tokens on Audible. You can pre-order that now. You can grab it anywhere books are sold. And uh, I'm really excited about it and I hope you guys are gonna love it as much as I do. Get quiet this week. See if you can hear what your spirit guides are saying. I'll be back soon with more conversation. And as always, I love you guys and I'm rooting for you. <laughs>